I want to make a 1950s sundress on a 1950s sewing machine. I think that'd be actually really fun. So my family likes to collect vintage sewing machines. This is a fairly new hobby for us just in the past two years and we have collected two of the same model sewing machine. The first machine that we have was actually a family heirloom from my grandmother. It's a white series 77 so of course. <laughs> Hey you guys, so today I'm going to be making Vogue 8789 on a Series 77 white sewing machine. I'm going to be using this poly cotton that I got for real cheap and I'm going to make a dress out of it. Let's go! So I've noticed that the 1950s pattern blocks that I've been using have a longer waistline than what I typically prefer. So I just shortened it using the lines provided on the pattern. I've made this pattern before. This is the other view on the pattern envelope. I made this about a year ago and I did have a couple fitting issues with the pattern. It had a couple problems when I made it. It was much longer waist than what I'd like so I had to cut off a whole bunch of excess at the waist when I was sewing it and then the shoulders actually stretch because the bodice is on the bias so, so I had to learn how to properly work with bias cut fabric during that time because I had never worked with it before. But I managed to get everything so it fit right, so it worked out in the end. So I cut out the rest of my bodice pieces, as well as one panel for the skirt. I needed an extra panel, but I didn't actually have enough fabric, so I just cut out a whole bunch of scrap fabric into rectangular strips and I decided to piece those together and it managed to get about the same size as the front so I can do a whole bunch of gathers with the back so happy about that. Now from what I can tell the white series 77 machine has been around since before the 50s. From what I can tell the earliest I saw was 1940 but I couldn't find an exact date online. But this particular sewing machine has been around since 1952 with a date hand marked in my manual. I felt like skipping to sewing the skirt before I started on the bodice because that's just a bit more easier to put the skirt together. So I laid out all my panels that I had pieced together in the back in a thoughtful manner and I stitched everything together so that the skirt was completely stitched all the way around, leaving room for the zipper at one side. So then I set my machine up for basting by just changing the pink thread up top. I didn't feel like changing the bottom thread so I just left it as black. Then I lengthened my stitch to the longest width. I then ran two basting stitches around the top seam allowance of the skirt panels which this took a lot of time because there was a lot of skirt to this pattern. I finally decided to start working on my bodice pieces, for which I chalked and pinned the darts, for which there are four on the front and four on the back. 
I then stitched all my darts and I backstitched the top of my dart and then when I got to the point of the dart I actually did not backstitch. I tried to get as close as I could to the end of the fabric and I tied off the ends so that that wouldn't cause any bulk to that part of the dart. Now with this machine, I'm new to using it, so I'm still learning the quirks of it and how to actually use it properly. And what's really nice about this machine is that you can easily open it up and see everything that's going on with this machine. So you're able to actually see what's going on and, and you're able to see where any problems could potentially be. And one of the quirks of this machine in particular is that it likes to pull one of the upper threads into the top side of the panel where like this little hook thing is. So I'm able to fix this problem just by re-threading the machine and it works properly after that. So the next step is to sew some button loops for the shank buttons on the shoulder of the bodice. So to do this, I cut out some strips of fabric and then I folded them in half and ran a vertical line down the strips of fabric. And my bobbin actually ran out of thread, so I had to re-thread that. Oops. I always run a chest piece of fabric through my sewing machine because I can never get the bobbin of this machine inserted properly, which is a total me problem, but thankfully it worked out this time. And in order to turn out the loops, you tie a knot in the seam allowance at one end of the fabric, and then I ran a needle through and pulled the thread to turn out the loops, which I had never done this before, but I was actually really pleased with how it turned out, and I think I'm actually going to use this method again. I then cut the loops into two inch strips and I left them for later. I decided to move on at this point and work on the facing pieces. So I stitched two darts to the back of the facing and then I stitched the back facing to the front facing at the sides. I went back to my loops at this step and this is important, you stitch them on the front, the right side the front side, right side of the fabric, the front side of the front bodice pieces.
can you tell that I messed up? Um, I, I did this on the wrong side of the front pieces and I had to unpick everything for which I had backstitched this. I had to unpick everything and do it again. After that was easy step, just sewing the front to the back of the bodice and leaving room for the zipper at the left side. The pattern said to finish the bottom of the facing pieces before attaching them to the bodice, so I did that by serging all of the edges and turning that over and stitching that down. I then took the now finished facing piece and I pinned it to the top of the bodice so that all of the top edges of the fabric were covered by facing so that I could flip that over and you would put the facing inside of it. But before flipping it over, you have to understitch as much as you can of the lining, which I ended up skipping where like the button loops were, but I tried my best to get the back facing shoulder piece area and try to understitch at least a little bit of that. After that, I turned out the bodice and I tried to make sure that all the corners were poked through as best as I could. And then I whip stitched a couple different points along the facing on the inside to keep it on the inside. And I'm pretty good with my whip stitches with that. So you only get like one or two threads of the outside fabric and that's how you tack it down on the inside of the dress. And now we're almost done with the bodice. All we have to do left is to do five buttons to a shoulder, which I have my shank buttons right here. I actually did not have 10 of the same shank buttons and I didn't want to go out to get more. So I pulled these from one of my grandmother's stashes. I have both my grandparents' button collections. I am so happy I have buttons for life. And here's what the bodice looked like. It fits great. I was worried that it was going to be a bit too short because I didn't measure anything, but I am so happy with the length that I chose. I actually cut it even shorter than the petite size, but it fits me perfectly. I love where it sits. And look at those buttons, they look great. All right, it's time to gather the skirt now. I had trouble doing the green dress last year because there is just so much volume to the skirt. So I just used a running stitch with one thread to get that all put together. And then I went to the sewing machine and I stitched the skirt to the bodice and I am so happy that I did the basting by hand because the installation went great. All right, at this point I was getting kind of tired of working on this dress, so I just pinned up the side where I had left open for the zipper and I stitched that up. There was a zipper in this dress? I don't think there was. And of course, I did my usual finishings for my dress and I hemmed up the skirt. I decided to change it up though when I was hand hemming my skirt because I wanted a bit of a wider hem than usual. So I used a stitch that I believe is called a cross stitch hemming stitch or something like that. Which is basically back stitches going from the dress to the hem, only picking up a thread or two of the dress of course. The pattern then said to stitch an inside belt for stability. And for me, I used a medium interfacing ironed onto a strip of fabric and then finished by serger. So that's what I did. And I just attached it at a couple different points, like I do my facing. So like the inside of the darts or in the seam allowance at the sides and also along the seam allowance of the waistline. I figured that the few points that I did attach the inside belt for stability would be enough to stabilize it. So I just left it at that. And with that, my dress is done. This dress came together a lot smoother than my green dress did last year, which that proves that practice really does make perfect. And the more that you actually continue with a hobby, the more that you can see improvement in your work. 
I've been sewing for two years now, and even though I'm still a beginner, at least in my mind, I am able to see that I'm making clothes and I'm getting better at it. So I'm happy that I'm continuing with this hobby and making more things. Anyway, I hope you guys are proud of me for actually getting some video outside of my brick wall that I always film in front of. This is as close as I'm getting to any sort of vacation this year, and maybe I can just pretend I'm like Mrs. Maisel at the Catskills. I usually like wearing a thick belt with dresses that have waistline seams like this, and I've been looking for a belt that has a retro square belt buckle for a while, and then I was lucky that at my local super mega fabric warehouse, they actually had a whole bunch of belts like this, so I managed to grab one so that I could pair it with this dress, and it was really cheap, so I was really happy that I found that there. Anyway, if you've gotten this far in the video, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Next week, I'm going to put out the last installment of my Remnant miniskirt series. If you'd like to stick around for that, consider subscribing. I hope you all have a wonderful day and thanks again for watching.